Hello, and thanks for joining us for the 37th episode of Into the Killing. If this is your first episode, thank you so much for giving us a chance, and hopefully you'll find it interesting. If you listen to a few other episodes, thanks for coming back. And of course, if you listen to the other 36 episodes, that's amazing, and we are so thankful. For this episode, we're going back to the summer of 1993. In August 1993, pop star Michael Jackson was investigated for the first time regarding allegations of sexually abusing a young boy. On August 3rd, in Rwanda, the Hutus and the Tutsis, who had been involved in a civil war since 1990, signed a peace treaty. Unfortunately, it went last. Eight months later, the Rwandan genocide began, and it's estimated that anywhere from half a million to over a million Tutsis were murdered. On August 10th, Ruth Bader Ginsburg was sworn into the United States Supreme Court. On August 13th, the Royal Plaza Hotel in Nakhon Ratchasima, Thailand, collapsed. 137 people were killed and 227 were injured. On August 23rd, the movie The Fugitive, starring Harrison Ford, was enjoying its third week at the top of the box office. The number one song was British reggae band UB40's cover of Elvis Presley's 1961 classic Can't Help Falling in Love. On the night of August 22, 1993, 36-year-old Patricia Lang was staying at the University Park Holiday Inn in West Des Moines, Iowa. West Des Moines is a fast-growing community in the Des Moines metropolitan area. It's a unique city because it's in four different counties. Patricia Lang was staying at the hotel because she had just moved back to the area. Lang went to high school in Keokuk, Iowa. By all accounts, Lang was a brilliant woman. In high school, she had a perfect 4.0 grade average. She was involved in many other activities in high school. She acted in school plays, she was on the drill team, she was a member of the yearbook staff, she was on the school newspaper, and she was part of the French club. When Lang graduated in 1975, she was the valedictorian. Lang went on to the University of Northern Iowa, where she studied mathematics. She held a 3.9 grade point average. In her senior year, she won the award for best math student at the university. In 1981, she got a job with Martin Marietta, a construction aggregates and heavy building materials supplier in Colorado. At some point, she got married. The marriage didn't produce any children, and eventually, she and her husband divorced. Early in 1993, Martin Marietta had laid off 1,700 employees. Lang became worried about her future at the company, so she started looking for another job, preferably one that was closer to her family in Iowa. She got a job with a mortgage company in Des Moines, and she started on August 16, 1993. Lang was staying at the hotel until she found permanent housing. On the morning of August 23, 1993, a housekeeper let herself in to Lang's room. She made a horrifying discovery. 36-year-old Patricia Lang had been brutally murdered. Her body was on the floor next to the bed, wrapped in a comforter. Her wrists had been bound with a cloth. She had also been gagged with a piece of cloth. Another piece of cloth was wrapped around her neck, along with a metal coat hanger. The medical examiner would later determine that the cause of death was ligature strangulation with a coat hanger. Lang was nude from the waist down, except for her shoes and her socks. Her purse and her wallet were found in her room, and there was money in her wallet. So the police didn't think that robbery was the motive. Instead, they believed it was a sex crime. Semen was found on the victim. The comforter that was wrapped around her was examined. A shocking amount of semen was found on the comforter. In total, 38 semen stains were found. The forensic expert believed that most of the semen came from prior hotel guests and not from the killer. The police were able to develop a DNA profile from the semen found on the victim's body. However, no match to the DNA could be found. The police were curious as to how the killer got into the room. There were no signs of forced entry. 
so the police believe that Lang knew her killer or the killer used a ruse to get into her room. Lang's family didn't believe that she knew her killer. They said that Lang didn't have many friends, but the friends she did have were very close. Her friends and family did not think that she'd be friends with someone who could commit such a terrible murder. Unfortunately, the police didn't find any promising suspects. Tragically, the case went cold. Four years later, in September 1997, 21-year-old Zurieta Sukhanovic was working as a housekeeper at the Budget All Inn in Clive, Iowa. Clive is another city in the Des Moines metropolitan area. The Budget All Inn was just a quarter of a mile away from the Holiday Inn where Patricia Lang was murdered. Sukhanovic was a Bosnian refugee. She and her family had moved to Des Moines about 10 months earlier. On the morning of September 4th, 1997, Saganovic was working at the hotel. Around 10 a.m., her supervisor noticed that her cart was abandoned in the hallway just outside of her room. The supervisor entered the room and she was horrified by what she found. Lying on the floor next to the bed, wrapped in the comforter, was Saganovic's dead body. She had been bound and gagged. She had been stabbed multiple times in the chest and strangled. Besides her socks and shoes, she was nude from the waist down. The police immediately saw connections between Sukhanovic and Lang's murders. They were both murdered in hotel rooms within a quarter mile of each other. Both were bound, gagged, and strangled. Both of their bodies were found wrapped in a comforter on the floor beside the bed. They were both nude from the waist down, and they were still wearing their socks and shoes. However, not everyone was convinced that the same person committed the two murders. For example, Zaganovic was stabbed, and unlike Lang, she wasn't sexually assaulted. Unfortunately, just like with Patricia Lang's murder, the police had no suspects in Zuria Zaganovic's case. In early 1994, 15-year-old Mariana Redvanovin was working as a housekeeper at the Best Western Walnut Creek Inn in West Des Moines. The hotel was about four and a half miles from the hotel where Saganovic worked. Redvan was an immigrant from Ecuador. Despite being just 15 years old, she didn't attend school and she worked full-time as a housekeeper at the hotel. She had been working at the hotel for about nine months. On the morning of January 23, 1998, about four months after Sukhanovic was killed, Red Rovan reported for work. A supervisor found her dead on a bed in one of the rooms. She had been stabbed multiple times. However, it did not appear that she had been sexually assaulted. Investigators no longer doubted that a killer was stalking women in hotels in the Des Moines area. We're just going to step away from this episode to bring you a word from our sponsor, Manly Bands. When I got married, the part I cared about the least was my wedding band. In hindsight, this was ridiculous because my wedding band is something I'll hopefully wear for the rest of my life. I really wish I had known about Manly Bands when I got married because I could have picked a ring that better suited my personality. Manly Bands was kind enough to send me a second wedding band and I love it. It's called The Novelist. It's silver cobalt chrome with a brush matte finish. What really blew my mind about Manly Bands was that they have rings that are made from actual dinosaur bones. You should go to their website and check them out because they look amazing. And it'd be awesome to explain to people that your wedding band contains actual dinosaur bones. Manly Bands offers your hand the freedom to look how you want it in just about every type of earthly material imaginable, and even from space. They have standard materials like gold and steel that look amazing, but they also have rings made from antlers, and as I mentioned, dinosaur bones and even for meteorites. I also really like their curated collections, like the Jack Daniels Whiskey Barrel Collection. To get started on Manly Bands, or the Manly Ring Sizer, to make sure your ring will fit perfectly during work and play. Once you know your ring size, then you get to pick your ring from their insane collection. Once you've selected your band, Manly Bands offers free worldwide shipping, a 30-day exchange policy, and a free warranty. While there might be a 50% chance of your marriage working out, there's a 100% chance that you're going to love your band. 
Tour your Manly Band and get 21% off, plus a free silicone ring. Go to manlybands.com slash listed. That's manlybands.com slash listed for 21% off. Manly Bands, the best damn rings, period. One of the biggest problems for the investigators were the locations where the murders were committed. All three women were killed in hotel rooms. People come and go from hotels all the time without drawing attention. So there was a good chance that the killer wasn't local. Even though the odds were against them, the investigators didn't want to sit around and wait for the killer to strike again. They thought that the best chance of narrowing in on a suspect was to reopen Patricia Lang's case. She was the first known murder victim, so the killer may have had a connection to her or the hotel where she was staying. Also, that case had the most physical evidence. One thing that the investigators did was look at former employees who may have had a grudge against the hotel. This led them to focus on 38-year-old Donald Piper. Piper had been a maintenance man at the hotel, but two months before Lang's murder, he was fired. He was let go because a housekeeper had filed a sexual harassment suit against him. The woman claimed that while at work, Piper would follow her, and then, after work, he would follow her home. He would also write sexual notes. One time, he locked her in a cleaning closet until she agreed to have sex with him. Piper had keys to all the rooms in the hotel. The police were never sure if he turned his keys in when he was terminated. The police looked at Piper as a suspect in Lang's murder early in the investigation, but they had eliminated him. They had taken a sample of his saliva, but they had never compared his DNA to the DNA left at the crime scene. So when they reopened the case, they decided to compare his DNA to the killer's DNA. The lab used a type of DNA testing that was old and not very precise. Piper's DNA didn't match the killer's DNA, but it wasn't a strong match. Statistically, there was a chance that the DNA could have belonged to 10 other men in Iowa. So, it wasn't enough evidence to arrest Piper, but the investigators decided to bring him in for an interview. The detectives asked Piper if there were any reason his DNA would be found at any of the crime scenes. Piper said no. But then, later that day, after the interview, Piper called one of the detectives. Piper said that he used to masturbate in empty hotel rooms when he worked at the Holiday Inn. The detectives thought that Piper told them this to explain why his DNA could have been found in Lang's room. In October 1999, the police decided to keep Donald Piper under 24-hour surveillance. Piper did not like this at all. He started recording the police following him with his video camera. He would scream obscenities to the officers and taunt them. He would even challenge them to physically fight. The investigators became worried that the surveillance was putting too much pressure on Piper and he might hurt someone to release some anger. So they decided to back off. In January 2000, the Iowa Crime Lab wanted to compare Donald Piper's DNA to the killer's DNA using a much more sophisticated form of testing but the analyst ran into a problem. He thought that all the killer's DNA had been used up in previous testing. So he examined Lang's socks, and he was surprised to find semen on them. From the stains on the socks, he was able to develop a full genetic profile. It was compared to Donald Piper's DNA. It was a perfect match. The fact that the semen was found on the socks was significant. Piper had tried to explain the possible presence of his semen because he said he would masturbate in empty hotel rooms. This could explain why his DNA was on a hotel comforter, but it did not explain why it was on Patricia Lang's socks. On January 20th, 2000, six and a half years after Lang's murder, 38-year-old Donald Piper was arrested. After he was arrested, the police examined the evidence from Zuryada Sukhanovic's case to see if they could connect him to that murder as well. 
A forensic analyst collected 10 bloodstains from the comforter that was wrapped around Seganovic's body. DNA testing proved that one of the bloodstains was Donald Piper's blood. This was important because Piper claimed he had never been in the hotel where Seganovic was killed. A few months after he was charged with Lang's murder in April 2000, Piper was charged with Seganovic's murder as well. Donald Piper was tried separately for each murder. He went to trial in October 2000 for the murder of Patricia Lang. But then, shortly after the trial started, the judge declared a mistrial. The prosecution was supposed to share all the evidence against Piper. The defense had been told that all the swabs from Lang's body had been destroyed. But it turned out that there was a swab that could be tested. He had been misplaced in the evidence room. Donald Piper went to trial again for Lang's murder in May 2001. At his trial, Piper and his wife testified, and they said they had sex in a dozen rooms in the hotel. They also claimed that they were together and out of town at the time of the murder. The jury deliberated for 30 hours over 8 days. Donald Piper was found guilty of first degree murder. He was given an automatic life sentence. He went to trial for the murder of Zurieta Suknovic in June 2002. The jury deliberated for 10 hours over two days. He was once again found guilty of first degree murder. He was given another life sentence. The police are confident that Don Piper also killed 15 year old Mariana Redronovin. However, they do not have enough physical evidence to charge him with a crime. So while Piper may never face charges for the murder, the police consider the case closed. The police have also investigated Piper in connection with four other murders. The police did not say what murders he might be connected to but four women in the Des Moines area were killed between Lang's murder in August 1993 and Redronovin's death in January 1996. On August 8, 1995, two years after Lang was killed, the body of 24-year-old Connie Jo Cho Bonensteiner was found in a storage locker in an apartment building in Des Moines. The cause of death was ligature strangulation. Months later, on November 22, 1995, 47-year-old Martha Erickson was found in the shallow water of Avon Lake, which is just outside of Des Moines. Less than two years later, on August 28, 1997, 33-year-old Julie Davis was found stabbed to death in the back of her workplace, an advertising company in Des Moines. A week later, 21-year-old Zurieta Sukhanovic was murdered in the hotel where she worked. A month after that, on October 8, 1997, 42-year-old Arlise Ponce's son found her stabbed to death in her home in Norwalk, Iowa. Downtown Norwalk is about 12 miles from downtown Des Moines. Three months later, 15-year-old Marianne Redvanovin was killed in the hotel where she worked. Then two years later, Donald Piper was arrested for the murder of Patricia Lang. Piper has never been charged with these other murders. The victim's families believe that no evidence connects him to the murders or he would have been charged. At the time of this recording, 60-year-old Donald Piper is serving a sentence at the Iowa State Penitentiary in Fort Madison, Iowa. He is serving life without parole. Unless the sentence is commuted, he'll die in prison. Thank you so much for listening to this week's episode. Our producer, fact checker, and sound designer was Anel Cloutier. If you just discovered this podcast, you should check out our YouTube channel. We have about 325 videos featuring bizarre but true crime stories. You can find it at youtube.com slash criminally listed. But that's all for now. Thanks again for listening. Please stay safe and take care of yourself.